Oh my God, did you guys hear the news? Breakthrough in nuclear fusion could mean near limitless energy, reports the well-respected Guardian newspaper this week. Researchers managed to release more energy than they put in, a positive gain known as ignition. Holy crap, that's incredible. I mean, that's literally incredible in that it's unbelievable. It is not credible. I do not believe it. Um, okay, let me... Let me start by saying that I am not, this might shock you, I am not a nuclear physicist. In fact, uh, I'm not any kind of physicist at all. I took calculus my senior year of high school, and I don't remember a thing about it. I think I got a B minus, maybe. I also got what I suspect is the only Bachelor of Science degree in the United States that does not require graduates to take a single college-level math course. So go ahead, look back through the past 10, 15 years of videos I've made for this channel. I challenge you to find three that deal with high-level physics or math. The reason you won't is because I know when I'm out of my depth, I do not swim in the deep end of rocket science. I happily float over here in the soothing hot tub of biology and psychology and things that I'm comfortable with. But here's something I do know a little bit about, free energy. Uh, Free energy is the idea that you can somehow get more energy out of a system than what you put in. And it has long been considered the magical key to a future utopia where we are no longer reliant on fossil fuels, where we don't need to release carbon into the atmosphere, where we can easily send spaceships to explore the farthest reaches of our galaxy. Uh, It's also long been a big old scam. Uh, For as long as I have been critically evaluating extraordinary claims, I've seen a new invention pop up at least every few years that claims to violate the laws, the laws of physics. Um, Stern was an early example. Stern, I don't remember how to pronounce it. They were a company that in 2006 claimed that they'd created a machine that offered free, clean, constant energy. They were so sure that they had done this that they took out an ad in The Economist inviting scientists to test this device. Hundreds of scientists responded. The company chose a jury from amongst those scientists. They tested it and they found Stern's attempts to demonstrate the claim have not shown the production of energy. The jury is therefore ceasing work. Oops. It sounds to me like Stern truly believed that they had invented free energy. And there are a lot of engineers, amateur physicists that over the years who have fooled themselves. But it's a scam. And so there are also plenty of people over the years who have used the idea of free energy to separate people and businesses and governments from their money. Like Josef Papp, he was an interesting character back in the 60s. He claimed to have invented a car engine that could operate without gas for six months before needing to come back to the company to be recharged somehow. Uh, Richard Feynman wanted to see it work, so he went to a live demonstration where, according to Feynman, at the demonstration, the machine, which he says was obviously an electric motor on a battery, exploded and killed one observer and injured two others, though we kind of only have Feynman's word on that. But um, Pap accused Feynman of purposely destroying the engine, and he tried to sue Feynman, and Caltech ended up settling with him out of court. Uh, Pap went on to continue collecting money from investors, but he would never show another of his magical engines again. What I'm saying is that while I may not be a nuclear physicist, I do know you can't get something for nothing. <laughs> um, yes, I know physicists, physicists have been working on fusion for quite some time now. And I know that this Guardian headline would be the greatest possible result of that work. But I also know that we are nowhere near that, that point right now. So, What's really going on? Um, like this is a real newspaper, not the daily fail. Like they're, they're not out there promoting an obvious scam. So what, what's happening? 
So this news all stems from the National Ignition Facility, NIF, at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory right here in the Bay Area. They've been studying fusion, which is the way that our sun makes energy. Uh, as they might be giants once told us, the sun is a miasma of incandescent plasma where hydrogen is fused into helium to produce a massive amount of energy, which we see as light and feel as heat. It would be great to be able to do that here on Earth because we'd get all of that energy with none of the nasty radioactive waste that we're left with thanks to fission. But fusion requires truly ridiculous amounts of heat. That's why one of the common free energy scams over the years is called cold fusion. Wouldn't it be great if we could have fusion without all of that annoying heat? Sure would, but too bad. That's not the way the universe works. But there are other ways around it. And that's where this week's news comes in. Scientists have used a few different neat tricks, like uh, the ITER project in France, which uses giant magnets to create their own miasma of plasma to fuse particles. At the NIF, they're trying a different tactic of firing hydrogen pellets at 200 lasers, which leads to about 50 explosions per second, which produces heat, which is, you know, energy. The goal of all of these experiments is to reach a Q of one. Q is the symbol that scientists use to indicate energy gain, which is just the amount of energy you get out of a system divided by the amount of energy you put into the system. So if you get one from that equation, that means you break even. If you get a higher number, congratulations, baby, you've got free energy. Last year, the NIF announced that they had reached a Q of 0.7, record-breaking. And in a rather stunning leap forward, this week, they announced that they had reached the break-even point of Q equals 1, and even a little bit of extra energy out to achieve ignition. Holy crap, you may think, if they keep that rate up, then that means by next year, we're all taking a vacation to Pluto, right? Unfortunately, no. Now, this is not a scam a la Yosef Pop, but there do seem to be some experts who are alarmingly okay with allowing the public to be confused about what Q and break even and ignition really mean. You see, when NIF says that they've achieved a Q of one, they mean that the amount of energy they put directly into that hydrogen pellet has equaled the amount of energy they got out of it. The other and much more important number that you should know about is Q total. This number takes into account the total amount of energy you put into the project. For instance, how much energy did it take to turn on those lasers? NIF is running 192 high-powered lasers, which require a lot more energy than the 1.1 net megajoule that they produced in their experiment. To make matters worse, the energy they got out, you know, wasn't electricity, that's heat. And if we want to use that as energy, we have to transfer the heat into electricity, and that is not an efficient process. In fact, we'll probably lose like half of all of the energy just converting it into electricity. So while it's great that NIF hit this milestone, it's not anywhere close to being the milestone that we need to see in order to even begin to get excited about fusion as a scientifically feasible source of energy. I mentioned that it's not a Yosef Pop-esque problem, but I do see some unfortunate connections. It's not just mainstream news outlets like The Guardian who are getting it wrong about the Q value, about what all this means. Last year, theoretical physicist Sabine Hosfelder made a video in which she points out that several of the people in charge of these experiments have publicly made misleading statements about the energy output of their experiments. Here is Nick Walkton from JET in a TED Talk referring to ITER. ITER 
will produce 10 times the power out from fusion energy than we put into the machine. Now, JET holds the record for fusion power. Um, in 1997, it got 65% of the power out that we put in. Not one, not 10, but still getting close. But okay, you may say, no one expects a currency in a TED talk. Then listen to ITER Director General Dr. Bijou speaking to the House of Representatives in April 2016. And I look forward to learning more about the progress that ITER has made under uh, Dr. Bigot's uh, leadership uh, to address previously identified management deficiencies and to establish a more reliable path forward for the project. Uh, okay, so ITER will have been delivered is a uh, okay, full demonstration that we could have okay, 500 megawatt coming out of the 50 megawatt we, uh, well, we will uh, uh, put uh, in. And look, I'm not inside their heads, uh, but it's still like not that hard to understand why a person might be tempted to do that. NIF's press release includes the great news that Chuck Schumer is proud to announce today that he's helped to secure the highest ever authorization of over $624 million this year in the National Defense Authorization Act for the ICF program to build on this amazing breakthrough. That's a lot of money. Is it too much money? Is this a pipe dream that will never actually pay off? I don't know. I can't say. Uh, personally, I would be fine with a half billion dollars of taxpayer money going towards fusion, fusion research because we'd still have plenty of money left over for other research if we just, say, stop funding the military industrial complex. Like, we're wasting money on much worse things. And I sympathize with scientists who are working on something that they're passionate about, something that could one day in the very distant future, change the world for the better. Uh, but it's hard to always be able to get the general public and the funders to care about whatever your pet project is. But I don't sympathize with misleading people to get that funding and that attention. So sorry to once again be the buzzkill, but in my opinion, we aren't anywhere near to achieving fusion energy as of right now. But again, not my field out of my depth. So if you happen to be a physicist who knows what you're talking about, not just a physicist, you know, I play a physicist on the internet. If you're actually a physicist, feel free to comment below. Tell me why I'm wrong about this, that we are on the brink of a free energy revolution. But I remain skeptical.